It's no secret that we are in an economy where it is hard to buy a house here in Kansas City. The good news is there are many little to no down payment options available to home buyers. Hi, I'm Rachel Kilmer. I'm a real estate agent licensed on both sides of the state line, and I love helping my clients work through exactly this, how to buy a home with little or no money down. Today, I'm gonna break it all down for you right here on YouTube. Let's dive in. The first thing you can do is understand the various loan options there are out there. I know all of us have heard about conventional loans and think that they're the only way to go, but the truth is there are many loans that sometimes make sense for home buyers that already even do still qualify for a conventional. What I mean by that is I've had clients in the past that qualify for a conventional and an FHA, but for whatever reason, the FHA loan made more sense for their finances. Conventional loans typically require 3% down, FHA loans typically require 3.5% down, there are a couple of loans that require no down payment. One is a VA loan, but you or your partner has to be a veteran to qualify for that. The other is a USDA loan that I personally think should be leveraged more than I see it being leveraged in the metro area. The USDA loan applies to agricultural areas, which doesn't mean you have to live on a farm. It just means you're probably living in a smaller town, probably more like 25 or beyond minutes outside of downtown Kansas City. The key to understanding these loan types and how they can impact you is getting with a mortgage broker. I think a lot of people are nervous to take this step because they fear they're gonna be pressured or overwhelmed, but I can connect you with some great lenders out there who are really good about educating, explaining, and empowering you to make the best decision for yourself. Another hack for getting a house with little to no money down is exploring local and state down payment assistance programs. Both Missouri and Kansas offer down payment assistance programs. There's also some local programs depending on what community you're buying in, what area you're buying in, and there's a lot of lenders that are offering a credit to first time home buyers right now as well. It's a good idea to, again, meet with a mortgage broker early on, have this conversation, see what you qualify for, and see what you need to do in order to qualify moving forward if you don't just yet. True story though, I had a client recently buy a house, literally they brought no money to the closing table. They were refunded $1,000 at the closing table because they leveraged a variety of these different programs. Another way to be able to buy a house with little or no money down is using seller concessions. So in certain market conditions, you can negotiate seller concessions. And I say certain market conditions because this isn't true. Like right now, if you're buying in say Prairie Village for 300,000, it's one of the toughest price ranges and areas to buy in the city. You're gonna have a hard time getting a seller to pay your closing costs there. But if you buy a little bit further out from the hot spots, a little bit below or a little bit above of the most desirable price ranges, and or you wait and watch houses that have sat on the market for a few days, then you have more power to negotiate and to ask the sellers to pay for some or all of your closing costs. Sellers can't pay your down payment for you, but they can help with your closing costs and or your buyer's agent's commission if you need help with that as well. This is something that I think a lot of people are hesitant to look into, but that's leveraging gift funds. A lot of loan programs actually do allow for you to be gifted money to be using for your closing costs or your down payment. This is typically money that comes from a family member or a friend that just wants to help you get into a house. There's a lot of rules and guidelines about documenting these, so make sure you talk to a lender before you even go down this path. But if you think you have people in your life that may have been quietly saving to help you with a moment like this, I wouldn't be afraid to ask. Another tip for buying a house with low or no down payment and little to no money down is building equity with little down. And what I mean by that is just because you're getting in a house, just barely skating by, and maybe you're someone that's leveraging some of these programs where you go to the closing table with no money or very little money, you still can build equity over time. And this sets you up for success so that by the time you buy the next house, you don't have to leverage all of these programs. You have built equity in your own home that you can flip and roll into your next house. I wanna mention the role of your credit score in these no money down loans and these down payment assistance programs and various loan types. And what I wanna highlight is that it's, really critical. Your credit score plays a huge role in what you qualify for and what you don't. Any down payment assistance program or loan program views you as a risk that they are taking on and they wanna make sure that it's a 
you know, a good choice for them to invest in you and in this loan or in this house. So it's really important to pay attention to your credit score, but try not to obsess too much. I've had people who check their score literally daily and those fluctuations will drive you insane. But it is really important to get with a lender that can explain your credit score to you, help you find any errors that you can correct and lay out a plan to improve it over time. In a lot of cases, like I mentioned earlier, you do still have to pay closing costs, even if you get down payment assistance. So it's really important to understand what they are and how you can reduce them. Closing costs are typically comprised of title fees, lender fees, realtor fees, prorated taxes, HOA dues, and itemized things like that. A lot of it's called a prepaid cost. And ways you can reduce that are looking at which HOA has the lowest fees, looking at what the taxes are of the home you're purchasing, comparing and contrasting realtor fees, comparing and contrasting mortgage lender fees, and making sure that you feel confident in your title company. These are all things that make up your closing costs and are really important to understand and explore. But as I mentioned earlier, you can, in a lot of cases, negotiate for the sellers to pay for some or all of these. This is really critical that you work with an expert in this. And that is a professional real estate agent that does this full time and is an advocate for you and in your corner. I know that may sound biased coming from me because I am in this industry and I am an agent, but even if you don't use me, I assure you, you will never regret having someone in your corner that can save you literally tens of thousands of dollars of mistakes because we do not learn this stuff in school. This is all stuff that you do maybe a few times in your entire lifetime. So how could you know every detail? So it is super, super important to have someone in your corner. And I would love to chat with you about what that looks like, what you need to know, what questions you need to ask. Don't hesitate to slide into my DMs, reach out. We'll grab a cup of coffee or we'll hop on Zoom. And until then, I'll be here on YouTube giving you the scoop on all things Kansas City. See you next time.